Welcome to Hope Lutheran Church, Palm Desert, California, where everyone is welcome, and that includes you. This is an exciting time in our life together. Gisa is here, Gisa Sharon's here today, and she's our ministry leader, and she's gonna be sharing God's word. And what's happening in your life? I'm excited about this, yeah. My life, uh, personally, everything is great. Family's good, we're, we're doing great. Ministry-wise, we're popping right now. Um, actually, on St. Patrick's Day, on Thursday the 17th, we're celebrating four years of Celebrate Recovery here at Hope. So I wanna invite you to, even if you've never been, to come and attend. Uh, we're starting at six o'clock with dinner, where actually Nick, mm -hmm. our student ministry leader, he or director, he is uh, going to be cooking for us. He's cooking corned beef and cabbage. So I invite you to be there for dinner and stay for the event. I can't believe that. Four years already we've been making a difference in so many lives. So many lives, it's just yes. Great. Yes. And yeah. also the women's, uh, we started uh, up again with our outreach, the Hope Bags, where we're asking you to bring in uh, donations of, of hygiene items. And the list, we'll, we'll pop, pop a picture of the list here on the screen for you so mm -hmm. you can look or look on the website on the, under current, current events. All right, so it's the second Sunday in Lent. Let's worship. The good news for today comes from Luke chapter 13. At that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to him, get away from here for Herod wants to kill you. He said to them, Go and tell that fox for me, listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day, I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day, I must be on my way, because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you. And I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. The good news of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let's pray. Dear God, we're thankful to be here together today and please help us to open our minds and our hearts for what you have with your word for us today. Amen. Well, last week I spent a few days in Colorado. It was uh, my son Aaron's last spring break at college before he actually graduates this next month, the end of April. We love spending this kind of active, outdoorsy time together and always have a great time like, like two best friends would. But he is 22 and there's always that time when I get into my protective mom mode when we are together. It was actually our last morning on the trip when we were sitting having a bite of breakfast together when I said to him, now brace yourself because I need to get into my mom mode for a moment. I know you love it when I do that, but please, at least hear me out. I looked over at him and saw this little smile coming across his face, which told me he's probably thinking, oh yeah, here she goes again, in a loving way though. So I know that he doesn't really follow too much of what I have to say anymore, but that doesn't change my need to still say it because I love my son and so I'll always do anything I can to possibly protect him from getting into any type of danger. So I said, there's that storm coming in tomorrow, so be careful. Don't drive too fast on the icy snowy road. Don't text while driving. Make sure to have both hands on the steering wheel and don't drive too far when you're tired after a long day of skiing. Make sure to get your tire fixed and you really need to have your cracked windshield replaced and on and on and on and on. Why am I willing to go through this routine over and over again? Well, because of my deep love and concern for him. This love is so devoted that I'm willing to remind him over and over, whether he listens or not, or just chuckles me off, but it is so worth it to me to try, always hoping that at least he knows how much he is loved and cared about. Now, giving advice is also one of the ways how Jesus shows us his deep, deep love for us. 
Don't worry about tomorrow. Don't store up treasures on earth. Don't judge. Love your enemies. Jesus' hope for his children is the same we have for our own. Our own children, our own loved ones, family members, even our friends. In our good news reading this morning, Jesus is lamenting. He's sorrowful. He's mourning that the people of Jerusalem have not been following his advice or don't respond to his desire to care for them when he says, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. Have you ever loved someone so much and tried to protect them from taking a dangerous path in their life, like I still do with my son, but then you watch them take the dangerous path anyway? If you have, you understand the intensity of emotions and, and Jesus' outcry here. On the Mount of Olives, one of the three hills on a long ridge to the east of Jerusalem, there's the Church of Dominus Flavit a church in the shape of a teardrop to commemorate this incident in the gospel of Jesus' weeping over the future fate of the city of Jerusalem. Inside the church is a mosaic depicting the scripture and a picture of what could have been if Jesus' offer of love and care for the people of Jerusalem would have been received. It's a picture of a white hen with a halo and her wings spread to keep her chicks safe underneath. The words are written in Latin and the last words are set apart in the center of the picture. And you were not willing. This image of the hen and the chicks is one of the strongest statements Jesus makes in the Gospel of Luke. And it describes what Jesus' desire is for his people in the middle of any of life's reality as they will always, as we will always be faced with danger and, and struggles. Jesus is warned in the beginning of the passage to get away from here for Herod wants to kill you. To which Jesus replied, go tell that fox. Well, obvious, Jesus refers here to Herod as a fox, a sly, dangerous, destructive animal a symbol of an insignificant, worthless, and weak leader. Jesus knows he is evil lurking near. He knows this could be a matter of life and death if not taken seriously. Jesus is declaring that he'll ignore Herod's threat and move on to continue to pursue the people he loves in order to protect them, just like the hen would with her chicks. He knows at this point that this might be a hopeless cause because he's been pursuing the people of Jerusalem for such a long time, and they've been rebelling against God over and over, refusing his way of peace. Now, chicks, naturally, don't stray far from their mother hen because they completely understand that it's best to, that the best place for them to be is and to be fed and kept warm is close to her. This kind of nurture is nature's way of caring for the young. For a chick to stray from this place of shelter would be against nature's design and counter to the way God planned to care for the young and the weak. And it's the same all across the animal world. They all have a natural sense to stay close to their protective parent, to receive the food, the shelter, nurture, and protection they need for their survival. It's even true for human infants. From the beginning of creation, God has had a plan so that offspring will receive nurture and protection. But when it comes to people and our relationship with God, it's a struggle. We easily struggle to understand and pursue the love and protection that the God who created us has for us. But we're given free will and we're easy to turn away and choose our own path and walk right into the dangers of those icy, slippery roads, the temptations of isolation and independence from God. Jesus' plea to the people of Jerusalem is like the cries of a parent to their child. I have tried to tell you and protect you. I want to put my arms around you, but you won't listen and follow my advice. 
or your continued pursuit of someone you love and are trying to hold close to you, but your offer is unwanted and your love is unreturned. Jesus is desperately looking toward Jerusalem, knowing he has everything they need, but watching also how they're all caught up in their perspective of the world, filled with all the anxieties and stresses and struggles of their lives, searching for meaning and purpose, and while they're doing that, ignoring or maybe just not being able to see everything that Jesus has to offer. John writes in his account of the life of Jesus, he came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But when we do, when we accept God in the decisions and our searching for meaning and purpose, God is right there to help. When life is uncertain, when we can't sleep at night, when we struggle in a relationship, when we're filled with fear about how to face death of a loved one, or maybe even our own, or, or when we're struggling even just simply to believe. We need God's help even when we're unsure about our faith, our health, our future, or the future of our children, our jobs, our finances. When we struggle with shame or guilt because of something we've done or said, or how we may have failed to show love and grace to others in our life. God wants to be our protector, our provider from all of these things and for all of these things. He wants to be our defender and our guardian, our shield from any evil and danger, but it is up to us to decide whether or not we'll let God do that for us. We're left with an invitation. We can choose the fox, which more likely will mean a future of uncertainty, possibly even destruction and deceit, or we can hover under the protective wings of Jesus. Sundar Singh, a Christian from India who lived about a century ago, on one of his travels, he came upon a devastating fire, forest fire in the Himalayan mountains. While there were many working to fight the fire, there was a group of people standing under a burning tree, looking up into the branches. They were watching a bird flying anxiously around a nest filled with its young ones. As the fire got closer to the nest, everyone was curious what the mother bird would do to try to save her little ones. It became obvious that there was nothing she could do to save them and no one watching could do anything to help either. She could have flown away though and saved her own life, but she didn't. Instead, she sat on the nest and covered her little ones carefully with her wings. The fire caught her and burned her to ashes, but her little ones underneath survived safely, covered by her wings. She showed her love for her little ones by giving up her own life. If this little creature had such love for its little ones, how much more must God, much love, must God have for his children, for all of us, for you? We know the answer to this question because we know how the story ends for Jesus. His pleading for Jerusalem to come toward him, to choose his way, is not heard with receptive ears. Jesus' intention in the moment when he's being warned to escape, to save himself, is to follow what he knows his calling is, to go to Jerusalem, to face the fire, just like the mother bird did for her little ones, to face the disaster he was predicting for the city, the whole nation, to give himself, give his life, to save the people, save all of God's children, both then, and now. The question is, are you willing? Are you willing to listen? Are you willing to hear the plea, to listen to the advice and receive the love and care that Jesus has for you? Are you willing to allow the protective wings of Jesus to cover you? Are you willing? Let us end by reading out loud, and you will see it on the screen together, what the psalmist wrote. Let's read this. How precious, O oh God, is your constant love. We find protection under the shadow of your wings. Let's pray together. Dear God, we're so thankful for this reminder, for this reminder of your love and your willingness and your, your being so ready to be there for us and protect us and take care of us and provide for us in any way you can in any areas of our lives. So help us to receive that. Help us to receive and lean into that 
when we need it or even just on a daily basis just to live the best life that you have for us. And for all of us, I pray in Christ's name. Amen. And now join us in singing our St. Patrick's hymn, O Christ the Saint. Thank you, Gisa, for reminding us again how much God loves us. If you'd like to support the ministries here at Hope Lutheran Church, there are three ways to do so. You may mail your gift to Hope Lutheran Church, 45900 Portola Avenue, Palm Desert, California, 92260. Or you can text to give at 84321. Or you can go to our website at hopepd.org and click on the To Give button. If you haven't subscribed to our broadcast, now is the time to click on the su subscribe button so that we can add you to our list of followers. Let us together confess our holy Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, where he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Today I'd like to include a prayer uh, for peace in Ukraine. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we pray that there would be peace on earth. We pray that it would begin with us. We know that often war and conflict come from either selfish ambitions or warped reasons. Sadly, we know that war can also come from warped religious ideas. We ask, Lord, that there would be peace in Ukraine. We ask that there would be peace sooner rather than later and that the aggression would stop. We pray for both the people of Ukraine and the people of Russia, so many of whom have no choice in this matter and are simply living out events decided by other people. We pray for their health and safety. We also pray for the transformation of the hearts of the people behind this conflict. We pray that you would help them find peace in their hearts and that it would begin with them and overflow that peace might abound in that part of the world. We pray as well for other parts of the world that endure conflicts about which we rarely hear, but struggles that have been going on for many, many years. We ask that your children, that we might be at peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us now pray together the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us all from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant to you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We'll see you next week. Go out, make a difference.